My Lords, I'd also like to begin by congratulating, congratulating Viscount Camrose on his excellent maiden speech. Clearly, he has a whole set of skills and experiences that are going to ensure that his contributions in, his, in this House are going to be highly valuable, as was apparent by his incisive and to the point speech today, much of which I would agree with and would in, want to endorse. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to declare my specific interest as the Church of England's lead bishop for housing. Noble Lords will know the Archbishop's Commission on Housing, Church and Community has been actively working to envision how the Church, Government and the Nation might tackle the current housing crisis. Last year, the Commission released its Coming Home report, which sets out in detail a reimagining of housing policy and practice centred on five core values, which are that housing should be sustainable, safe, stable, sociable and satisfying. Recently, we announced our intention to create a whole new national housing association, which will enable the church to become a major provider of social housing. We are committed to doing our part to tackle the social housing shortage, and likewise to working with others to bring about this vision of truly good quality housing across the nation. Therefore, I welcome the government's introduction of the Social Housing Regulation Bill. Many of the measures set out in the bill begin to address issues of transparency and accountability. The removal of the serious detriment test is much needed. As things stand, the serious detriment test is a major barrier to ensuring a proactive engagement with tenants' concerns. It is right to remove it in order to ensure good living standards are upheld and maintained. The setup of an advisory panel to amplify tenants' voices is also very welcome. Too often, the concerns of social housing tenants have been ignored or silenced, and this must end. The tragedy of the Grenfell Tower fire demonstrates the urgent need for safety to be a central objective. We must do everything we can to ensure this dreadful tragedy is not repeated. As the Bishop of Kensington, the Right Reverend Dr. Graham Tomlin said at the recent five-year memorial service, what happened at Grenfell was wrong. It was not an unfortunate accident. It was the result of careless decisions taken, regulations ignored, an industry that seemed at times more interested in making profits and selling products than in the precious value of human life and keeping people safe in their own homes. My Lords, I'm sure you will join me in strong praise of the work done by the Bishop of Kensington and the incredible Grenfell community to bring about a safer future for social housing, both in their community and across the nation. It is only right and appropriate, therefore, that the government has now made safety one of the regulator's fundamental objectives in this bill. Can I urge the government to also consider adding as fundamental objectives the other core values of sustainability, stability, sociability, and satisfaction. These can work in complementarity to ensure truly good housing for all. I would also ask the Minister what plans the government has to increase the amount of good quality social housing stock in the nation that meets these objectives. Recent decades have seen a drastic drop in available social housing. According to Shelter, since 1991, there has been an average annual net loss of 21,000 social homes and over 1.2 million households are currently waiting for social homes. Millions have been pushed into the private rented sector, often resulting in unstable and unacceptable circumstances of overcrowding or temporary accommodation. We must work together to address this shortage of supply. In doing so, it's essential we ensure this is truly affordable housing. Current definitions of affordability fall short. What is classed as affordable should reflect residents' ability to pay rather than local market rents. 
Simply building more homes without consideration of their affordability won't solve the housing crisis. I understand the impetus for fining social housing landlords. However, I would be very grateful if the Minister could clarify how this will work effectively, given that such fines are likely to take resources from the Housing Association, thereby potentially reducing its ability to provide services, improvements, tenancy and neighbourhood support, a point already touched on by the noble lady Baroness Wilcox. And finally, my Lords, in addressing the housing crisis, I would urge the Government to consider one more essential element set out in the coming home report, and that is sacrifice. At present, the cost of the housing crisis is falling largely on those who are financially poorest, resident in unaffordable or substandard housing. This is starkly evident at the moment as the cost of living crisis bites as well. The housing crisis won't be solved unless there is a willingness among others in the housing market to share this burden. That means landlords, developers, landowners, homeowners and government. These sacrifices will help ensure a lasting housing legacy that works for us all a long-term cross-party housing strategy that brings together those at every level of government, together with landowners and developers, landlords and homeowners, and faith organisations. That is the only way sustainable and meaningful transformation will happen.